Hey everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Hey, first and foremost, I want to apologize that, you know, um, I wasn't posting content on a weekly basis as I mentioned, you know, uh, in my previous blog post or like throughout the whole blog series. The reason was that I was out on a vacation in India and uh, for pretty much a month or so, actually it was a little over a month, so I wasn't able to post anything at all. I, I mean, I had limited access to internet, um, all the resources that I used to put up the blog content, so um, I, I, I'm, I apologize for it. and. Uh, um, I'm going to make sure that from this week onwards, we'll post content on the weekly basis to make sure that everybody is on the same page and can get the learning experience in a, you know, legible sequence. All right. So uh, today's topic that we're going to talk about is application modeler, right? Um, we've already talked about the process studio, so we are done on that front. Now, uh, we were on Object Studio and in there, after discussing the different, you know, uh, like toolbars and everything that, that are incorporated within the Object Studio, we are going to talk about Application Modeler. So, let's open any object, let's say VJ Object 1, right? And in here, whatever the page it is, initialize cleanup are like the default ones, but let's go to the action one right in any of the pages um, we have this option or not specific to pages but specific to the business object for each business object we have this capability called application modeler so um, just to break down this term modeler means something that we model something that we create we structureize right an application in here is like the target application that we will be automating Right. I'm not sure if you remember, uh, but in the previous blog posts and um, even in case I didn't mention, we uh, there's this uh, quick concept that I want everybody to remember. It should be on your tips that uh, each and every business object should have one target application associated with it. Right. What that means is that um, let's say you are working with uh, two different applications. One is SAP and the other one is Oracle. Then for the SAP automation and then um, I'm not talking about the standard capabilities which are already pre-existing. I'm talking about something that you are going to create for yourself. Right. Something user created. Right. Customized automations. Uh, so all these solutions, um, let's say for the SAP, you need to have like the first object that you're going to create and you're going to use it in the process. And uh, there's going to be a separate object, let's say object two, which is going to automate your Oracle um, enterprise application. Um, however, there's you can put that stuff like the automations, both the consolidated automation in a single process flow, that's totally fine. I hope that makes sense, right? So, application modeler is that capability which tells the object which target application we are gonna run to automate and also it's gonna embed all the different UI elements that we're gonna use to do the automation. Right. For an example sake, um, let's say I have an application which is locally on my system and uh, or let's go with the web application option. Right. Now, um, I have a web, web application, let's say www.amazon.com. Right. And for this web application, we have like search box, which is one UI element. I have um, like different hyperlinks, I have different checkboxes, radio buttons, these are different UI elements, right? So the first and foremost option, which is 
to identify the application, whether it's web application or local application, um, the first, the identification of application is taken care of by the application modeler and the identification of UI elements is also a part of the application modeler, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go to the application modeler and it asks for an application name. You can put it any name you want, right? VJ object one, right? And it also tells us about the different types of applications that are supported within this application modeler of Object Studio. So I've given a pre pretty quick theoretical definition of each and every of these uh, applications. You can check that out in the blog article, which is there in the description of this video, right? Let's say if it is window application, then, um, Next, it provides that, you know, um, how are you going to be uh, like, how is the bot going to realize whether, uh, you know, the application, which application it is, right? So either you want to run it from the scratch, which is the first option, or you want to say that, you know, it will be already running and you just have to attach the bot to it so that the bot can, you know, perform the automation and everything. So that totally depends on us. Right, we're gonna go through different examples in further tutorials to go through these different examples, but to go through these different options. But uh, for now, like these are the capabilities, right? Now, uh, if you wanna run it from the scratch, we have to browse and provide the executable file path, which is like the .exe file path. Um, that's usually the extension that we use to open a web application and it is sort of the byproduct for all the programming languages that we have like whether it's Java, C++ and stuff, .NET and stuff. Okay. Once the executable is there, uh, let's put up something. Um, right. Let's say something like this exe file. Hitting next. If there are any command line parameters, so sometimes um, the executable files, if you provide a, a CMD parameter, the command line parameter, then it performs some operations, some initial operations, some initializing operations, like let's say login, right? Sometimes if you provide the user ID and password as command line parameters, then application would open up and it would, <coughs> would automatically log in as well, right? So we can keep it blank. Then uh, we can um, also put up a working directory, which is like, uh, if there are any byproducts of this target application, then those will be stored in a particular directory that we're gonna provide here. We're gonna skip that part. And uh, non-invasive automation technique, let's restrict to non-invasive. That means, you know, uh, it's not gonna hinder or hamper the, um, the capabilities that are provided by the target application, like in itself, right? Always like the automations that I have done so far, I've kept it as like, like the default as is, which is the check marked option. And uh, there are different modes. Like if there's a 32 bit mode, uh, that's what your system supports, 34 bit mode. But embedded default is like if it is embedded within the uh, overall Windows operating system itself, which is what we usually go with. And uh, if there are any options, like uh, if the tech, like, you know, sometimes when you have some issues, then uh, Blue Prism's technical support may provide you some of these options, which I have never used, right? As far as the initialization of an application is concerned, you don't, you don't usually need this. That's it. Once we finished, we have this application modeler window where we can select different elements, <coughs> excuse me, of the target application and then we can perform the automation, right? This is what we'll be doing in our subsequent blog articles. So uh, be patient. And uh, um, that is pretty much it for this week, right? I would appreciate if you guys could subscribe to the blog post, to my YouTube channel and uh, provide your feedbacks, your comments, shares, likes, you know, all the stuff that you can possibly think of. And uh, let me know if there are any questions or concerns. Um, you can reach out to me at info at prorpa.com or by commenting on the YouTube channel or on the blog post and I'll make sure I, I respond as soon as possible. All right. 
Um, this is it, guys. Thank you very much. Once again, uh, I apologize for not being able to put up the content on a weekly basis. But hopefully from now onwards, uh, we'll be able to do so. We'll be able to keep the regularity in the process. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.